This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, I'm working with the 123RF hyphen tower with selection image. Now this is the Photoshop document that I made in earlier lessons. The last time we saw this image, I was using it in the lessons on working with layers. And at that time, I added a layer mask based on the selection of the background sky that I had made previously. For this lesson, I'd like to remove that layer mask. I'm simply going to right click on the layer mask in the layers panel and choose delete layer mask. The image will return back to its original state. Since that layer mask is made from the selection that's saved with this file, I can always make it again at any time without any problem, really. Now, what I'd like to do is alter the background. This photograph of the Eiffel Tower isn't bad, but the sky leaves a bit to be desired. It's a little bland, and I'd like to adjust that. Now, I can reapply that selection that I'd made before. Remember, previously, I made a selection by using the Magic Wand tool and then choosing Select Similar, and it's still saved with this file. So I'm going to choose Select. Load selection. This is the exact same way that I made the layer mask previously. I want to choose the background sky selection and click OK. Now I'd like to add a photo filter to this layer. A photo filter is an adjustment layer, so I can add it by the little black and white split circle icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm going to choose photo filter. Now this will automatically open the adjustments panel and give me a new adjustment layer. And it basically takes whatever I had selected and applies that to the layer mask for the new adjustment layer. So as you can see, the silhouette of the Eiffel Tower is black, meaning the adjustment layer will have no effect on it whatsoever, and the sky is what's white. The adjustments panel can be used to change everything about this image. So you have from the filter dropdown list a wide variety of different choices for how you can change the background. Now, many of these match real traditional filters that you'd see on film cameras. What I'd like to do is warm this up. So I'm gonna choose one of the warming filters. Now, the next step of this is to set the density. If I turn off the visibility of the photo filter layer, you can see that it does have an effect on the background. It's a little warmer, a little more purple. If I raise the density slider, then the effect becomes even stronger. At a 0% density, the adjustment layer has no effect. At 100%, it's completely overpowering the background. And once again, I can just click the visibility icon off for the photo filter layer so you can see the original background color and the effect of the warming filter. So adjusting the density allows you to make the effects blend together. It's like blending with the original. And it gives you a great deal of control for how you want the effect to come out. There's a little checkbox at the bottom called Preserve Luminosity. When it's turned off, the filter completely overrides the brightness of the original background layer. When it's turned on, you can actually preserve that brightness, preserve the tonal variation. So I'll go up to about 80. It's whatever you really like. I like that purple background, I think it's nice. The alternative to this is you could actually choose a color to apply. The color option allows you to apply any color you like, and I'll go with a purple, okay, to the photo filter. So instead of using an existing color filter, you could actually tint this with any color that you prefer. Again, I'll turn off the visibility and turn it back on so you can see the effect. But I'd really like to go with my warming filter, and I'm going to lower the density a little bit so it's not quite so powerful. Like so. So the photo filters give you a really quick and efficient way of changing or adjusting the tones of your image. They're intended to work similarly to traditional filters that you see for film cameras, though with a little digital twist. Keep in mind that you can use your selections, and you should use your selections to control where adjustment layers apply.